an input, okay, we call the x values. The x values also are known as the domain and the independent variable. So these are all synonyms of each other. Anytime you see the word input, you can think of the x values. Domain means the x values, okay? Independent variable means the x values, okay? Those are all synonyms. And the output are the y values. Those are also called the range or the dependent variable, okay? These all mean the same thing. These are the y's, the outputs, and the range, okay? So if you have to find the domain or range, the domain is all the x's, the range is all the y's, okay? So in functions, the most important part of the function, every input, everything you input, every x value, can only have one output. It can't have two different outputs or two different answers. So an x cannot have two different y's. What we mean by that, okay, for example, you see this is a relation here. This is a group, okay, of ordered pairs, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4. Each x value can only have one y value. So if I look here, number 1. Okay, it goes to just 2. The x value of 2, it just goes to 4. The x value of 3, it just goes to 4. Okay, it, and let me see here, my computer's messing up a little bit. So, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 5. Each x value only goes to 1 y value, okay? 2 doesn't go to 4 and 2, it just goes to 4. That would be a function, okay? So, in this relation though, 1 goes to 5 and 1 goes to 7. See how 1 has two different outputs? If I put in 1, one time I got 5 and one time I got 7. This is not a function because each x value, this x value has two different y values, okay? That one would not be a function because of this part here, okay? So for example, let's take your, our birthdays, okay? So imagine we had a relation where the input is every student at Hayden, okay? The input's every student at Hayden. The output was the birthday of that student, okay? Is this a function? So think about this. Ooh, let's go back. So the input is every person, okay? So we have, you know, like Ezekiel. When's your birthday? Uh, March 1st. March 1st. Thomas, when's your birthday? September 24th. Or 24th. Thomas, September 24th. And so on, okay? We keep going. So does every input... Every person only have one output. Does anybody have two birthdays? No, right? Because every input, every person only has one output, right? No matter who I listed here, there would only be one output. They could be the same. Like, for example, if, uh, if we had the same, somebody had the same birthday as Thomas, okay? Let's say Carlos had the same birthday as Thomas. That's okay, but Carlos still only has one birthday. Thomas still only has one birthday, okay? So each input has one output. That's one way you can think of it. That would be a function, okay? Now, what if we switched it? We said the input was every day of the year, January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th, okay? And the output was all the people who had that same day as their birthday. Like, for example, let's say I had something like, you know, Here's the days, and here's the people. You know, and well, yeah, you guys will forget. All right, like for example, my birthday is May 24th on there. I also know, sadly, Tiger Woods' birthday is May 24th. He's a punk, but you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so in this case, the input is May 24th. The output is me and Tiger Woods. Is this a function? Would this be a function? Does each input have only one output? No, because May 24th has two outputs, me and Tiger Woods, right? Each input has two outputs here. For example, probably, you know, December 31st, like I have a brother whose birthday is December 31st. Anybody else's birthday is December 31st? I know a lot of people's birthday is December 31st, right? So there's multiple people with December 31st, okay? Each input, the input, December 31st, has multiple outputs. It's not a function. Though. Does that make sense how we look at that? Okay. And here was just a bunch of, you know, random name people. For example, January 3rd, okay, had two outputs, okay? A bunch of just random names. Okay? It would not be a function. Okay. Another way we tell if it's a function is if we're given the graph, 
okay? We have this test called the vertical line test, okay? I can promise you, I think there's three questions like this on the test, just exactly like this one, okay? There's, given a graph, you say, is it a function? Is it not? And then we use this test called a vertical line test, okay? So for example, and I'm gonna darken this so you can see it a little better. This one right here looks like kind of like that Verizon check mark, okay? So we say, is that graph a function? One way we can tell is we use this test called the vertical line test, which means we draw a vertical line anywhere. Remember, vertical means from bottom to top, up and down. We draw vertical lines anywhere in this graph. If it only touches that graph at one point, it's a function. If it touched the graph in two points, it's not a function. So for example, this vertical line, it only touched the graph here at one point. This vertical line, it only touched the graph here at one point. This vertical line, it only touched it at one point. No matter where I move that vertical line, is it always going to touch at one point? Yeah. yeah. So this would be a function. Okay. If you use a vertical line anywhere and it only touches the graph in one point, it's a function. Another way to think of it, does every x-coordinate have only one y-coordinate? So like the x-coordinate of, I don't know, maybe this we call it x is 3, right? It only has one y-coordinate, maybe y is 3, somewhere about there. The graph's really small, so it's hard to tell. But each x-coordinate only has one y-coordinate. That means it's a function. Let's look at another one. So that one is a function. This one, I'll make it a little darker here. Looks like this. So we want to see, is this graph a function? Let's use a vertical line test. If we draw a vertical line anywhere through this graph, does it only touch at one point? No, because in this vertical line, it touches there. And there, it touches twice. Automatically, not a function. Another way to look at it, let's say this is x is negative 1. Maybe it's about there. It has two y, y values. It has one up here, maybe y is 4, and one down here, like y is negative 2-ish. Okay? So that's another way to look at it. This would not be a function because each x value has more than one y value. It can only have one. Okay. All right? Next one. And this one's dark also. Let me darken it up here. It looks like this. What do we think, function or not a function? No. Not a function, because if anywhere you draw a vertical line, well, this one touches three times, once there, once there, and once there. Not a, not a function. The reason, that x value, that's like x is zero, it looks like, has three different y values. One there, one there, one there. Not a function. All you have to do is draw a vertical line, though. Anywhere in the graph, if it touches twice, not a function. Very good. Okay. And the last one uh, looks like this. This one's a little tricky. Is that a function? Well, anywhere I draw a vertical line, it only touches once. It would be close drawing a vertical line here, but it's still curved enough. It would only touch one time. These aren't true vertical lines. They're kind of slanted. Okay. But if I drew a vertical line here everywhere, it would only touch once. Therefore, it's a function. Okay? If you can do that, you can answer at least three questions on the test. You guys will all be able to answer more. But there's three questions on the test, very similar to this. Okay? So that one is a function as well. The last thing we're going to talk about is function notation. Okay? This is a, a way to write functions. Anybody ever seen something that looks kind of like this a little before? Good. All right. Okay? What we call this, we call this function notation. We call this f parenthesis x. f's not a variable here. f stands for function. Okay? f's not a variable. This isn't f times x. Okay? This stands for the value of f or the value of the function at x. Or another way to say it is f of x. Or we could say f of x is another also name for y. Anywhere we see y, we could plug in f of x. Okay? This is the function at x. It's not f times x. Okay? f is not a variable here. So this is function notation. I can tell you also the like last two or three problems on the test, function notation, okay? Function notation. It says given this function, okay, this function of x is 2x minus 3. Evaluate this function when x is negative 2. So I'm going to take that negative 2 and everywhere I see x, I'm going to plug it in. So it says the function at negative 2 is equal to 2 times negative 2 minus 3. Now, 
Last year, they, we kind of got confused that we tried to like simplify this side. This just means the function at negative two. You don't have to do anything with this side. All you have to do is simplify this side. Have to do multiplication before subtraction. Two times negative two is negative four. And negative four minus three is negative seven. So the function at negative two, the output is negative seven. Okay, all I did was I replaced this x where it told me x is negative 2. Everywhere I saw x, I replaced it. But you don't have to do anything with the left side there. That just stands for the function at negative 2 is equal to, in this case, negative 7. Okay? It's not f times negative 2. You're not solving for a variable here. You're just simplifying or evaluating this expression. Okay? So this function at negative 2 is equal to negative 7. Questions on that? We're going to do another one of these. So one more of these in function notation. This says evaluate the function at x when it's equal to seven, negative 7x seven minus 3 when x is 4. So I'm going to say, okay, the, that function at 4, what is it equal to? Well, negative 7 times 4 minus 3. Again, I don't do anything with this left side. It just stands for the function at 4. I'm going to just simplify the right side. I have to do multiplication before subtraction. Negative 7 times 4, negative 28. And then I just take negative 28. If I'm in debt, neg $28, I take away three more. I'm, exactly. I'm in the whole $31. So that function at 4 is equal to negative 31. The input is 4. The output is negative 31. The input is 4. The output is negative 31. Okay? Again, so you're just basically plugging in x in these problems. But it's in function notation now instead of just being a random group of variables and numbers. Okay. How about this? First question, is this a function? Does each x value go to only one y value? Does 1 go to only one y value? Yeah, negative 2. Does 2 go to only one y value? Yep. Does 3 go to only one y value? Yep. It happens to be the same as the one with 2. Okay. That's okay. Yes, question. You multiply x times y. Uh, you, all I'm asking here is, is this a function, yes or no? So ye yes or no, this one would be a function because each x value only has one y value as the output. And it says if yes, which it is, state the domain and range. What do domain was at the x's or the y's? Remember that? X's. x's. So the domain would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. The range would be negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 5. Okay, those are synonyms. Domain and range, x and y. Okay if you ask to find the domain or range, okay? You can also put relations as you can graph them, okay? I just wanted to review this real quick. Remember the quadrants of the x-y axis? Remember the, the horizontal one's the x-axis, the vertical's the y-axis? This top one is quadrant one, the one in the top right, and then it goes counterclockwise, so opposite way a clock ticks, quadrant two, three, and four. So if we're ever talking about quadrant one, two, three, or four, that's what we're talking about here. And also remember, we called this middle point at 0, 0. We call that the origin. Okay. X-axis is horizontal. Y-axis is vertical. Okay. Uh, the input is also called the independent variable. Remember, we said X could also be called the independent variable. Same with domain. Okay. The output could also become we called the dependent variable because the output depends on whatever you put into the function. Okay. Uh, we're not going to do these because we're going to do this in the next chapter, okay, this graphing stuff. So we'll talk about that later with the table of values. That's not important right now because it's not on the test, okay. We're going to do this activity called graphing stories.